good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for this webinar. Uh, today's topic is about preparing for payment resumption with student loans. Uh, I am delighted to talk to you guys about what is going on, obviously, in the latest update that is involving federal student loans. I'm sure you've heard that student loans are going to resume with payments very, very soon after a well over three years hiatus. So we're excited to share about ways that you can get student loan forgiveness, lowering your student loan payments, and things to be aware of as payments look to resume and return to everyone's uh, budgetary thinking. Uh, we're going to start off with a couple of housekeeping things, but I want to do some introductions real quick. Uh, my name is Ronnie Lau. I'm a manager in government relations uh, with the National Education Association, and I have the pleasure of leading all of our legislative work on the Capitol Hill on higher education and student loans. And I'll pass it over to my colleague, Sam. Hi there. My name is Sam Junyets. I'm a senior policy analyst with uh, NEA's uh, Education Policy and Implementation Center. I work on a lot of our higher education and workforce policy issues. And I will pass it over to my colleague, Sophia. Hi, I'm Sophia Midas. I am a law fellow in NEA's Office of General Counsel, and I have had the pleasure of working on some student debt litigation and policy issues along with my colleague, Jeff. We'll pass it to you next. Hi there, I'm Jeff Bird. I'm staff counsel in NEA's Office of General Counsel. I've had the pleasure of working with Ronnie, Sam, Sophia, everyone on the phone and people throughout NEA on student debt issues as part of my work for NEA. Uh, I also had the pleasure last earlier this year, along with Sophia, of drafting an amicus brief in the Supreme Court student debt case. I wish we had had different results, um, but we are continuing to fight for all of our members uh, to get student debt relief from many forms, including the um, now eradicated uh, debt cancellation program, um, and we will continue to fight for you. Uh, I'll pass it along to Jason. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jason Long. I'm the Associate Director of Affiliate Relations at NEA Member Benefits. I manage a national field team of 13 individuals that are experts in student debt, so I hope you have the opportunity to engage with them at some point and learn more about the solutions along with what you hear tonight. Thank you. Uh, Scott? Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Scott Kish, and I'm the Chief Enterprise Development Officer for NEA Member Benefits. I work with Jason to um, uh, manage our staff that's out in the field, but also uh, work to develop new programs such as our Student Debt Navigator, which you'll be learning more about tonight. Um, so thank you all for joining us and look forward to sort of talking to you about sort of all the work that the association is doing on, on our members' behalf in this in this space. Uh, and I guess last introduction will be Lindsay from our partner, Savvy, who's going to be talking to you a little bit later. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, my name is Lindsay Clark. I'm the Chief Borrower Advocate for Savvy. We help power the Student Loan Navigator uh, that is powered by uh, NEA and NEA member benefits. So excited to be here and talk to you about it later on in the presentation. Ronnie, back over to you. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Well, thank you so much to all my colleagues. Um, clearly, you guys know here that you have a ton of experts at your disposal uh, we just want to make sure you knew who was speaking to you uh, in case you had any questions and throughout this presentation. A um, couple of housekeeping items before we get started. This webinar is, be is being recorded, so do not worry about missing any content or needing to go back to anything. You will have access to the recording when the webinar concludes. We will email that out to all the folks at the end of the webinar uh, a couple of days afterwards. Um, any questions that you have, um, please put them in the Q&A box at the bottom uh, of your Zoom function. Uh, the chat has been disabled, and this is just an easy way to allow us to answer questions um, as easy as possible and track these so we don't miss anything. And any questions that we do not get to in our FAQ portion at the end um, or uh, at the end of the webinar, we will make sure that we answer them uh, in email format, and that will be sent around to all attendees afterwards, just because we know that a lot of registrants uh, may have similar questions as each other. So you may want to see answers or questions that you may not have thought of at the time. Um, so do not fret. We will make sure to answer as many and as all questions as possible, uh, whether it's tonight or uh, afterwards and after the fact. Um, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. So just to kick things off, uh, for the latest resources from the National Education Association, uh, whether it's news, webinar invites such as this, new resources around student debt, you can text the word student debt, which is one word there, to 48744, and you can access all of our resources uh, at nea.org forward slash student debt support with those slashes in between. Um, our power to create these types of changes and to be heard in rooms of influence comes from our members out here. So many of you guys are our NEA members, and we cannot do this without you guys. 
And if you're not an NEA member, we hope you consider joining us today. You can head to nea.org forward slash join to learn more. So this next housekeeping item, if you're not already aware or familiar with the federal student aid website, this is studentaid.gov by the U.S. Department of Education through their federal student aid office. Um, they run a portal over there. Um, this is separate from your login from your federal student loan servicer, um, but this login will provide you access to a ton of information on your student debt dashboard. Um, there's a ton of wealth of historical information on your student loans, especially if it's been a while since the insemination of those loans. Um, and also a ton of different ways of how you can gain loan forgiveness and repayment options through uh, those opportunities. So if you already have an FSA ID, please make sure that your contact information is up to date because that is how the U.S. Department of Education uh, and the Biden administration will be reaching out to you about new opportunities for loan forgiveness or ways to lower your payment plan. Um, and if you do not have an FSA ID, we highly encourage you to make that as soon as possible. And again, this is not the same as your login with your federal student loan servicer. So let's go ahead and get into the content. So as I mentioned, the payment pause is ending. I'm sure many folks have heard about this already from the coming weeks to months of, of news that had been traveling uh, through all the networks. And so the background about this is back in 2020 in March, all federal student loan payments were moved into an emergency forbearance. And this paused all payments and dropped all interest rates on federal student loans to 0%. And this was quote unquote, the payment pause or what it was dubbed to be. Uh, this of course was extended several times, whether it was through the Trump administration or the Biden administration or through an act of Congress. Um, and now it will officially end on October 1st. So the payment pause specifically will now end in two stages. The first stage, which has already happened because we are at September 12th at this point, starting September 1st, regular interest rates will apply now all to student loans. So that 0% interest rate is no longer there anymore. It's starting to accrue again. And now starting on also October 1st, your first set of payments will be due. And some of you, you folks out there may already have um, billing uh, statements that have been coming into the mail or through email from your student loan servicer, which may or may not be the same servicer as when you were paying your student loans three years ago. Um, you should have received bills yet or soon to uh, receive a bill on that, and those payments will be due on the 1st. So how will we prepare for uh, returning to repayments? Uh, we're going to walk you guys through uh, every single one of these processes of things that we think you should do to prepare for this uh, for this uh, new era of student loans at this point. Um, and we'll I'll turn to my colleagues to go over each section. But the first step is to identify who your student loan servicer. As I mentioned, that may have changed in this uh, time period of the pause. Uh, you want to update your contact information, uh, which we touched base a little bit on already. You want to enroll in auto pay. And my colleagues will go into why that is so essential at that point. And you will also want to enroll in an income-driven repayment plan, which is paramount to a lot of our educators out there. So with that, I will now turn it over to my colleague, Sophia. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Fernie, for walking us through. So the first and most important step um, is to identify your servicer. So a lot of borrowers have been transferred to new servicers during the payment pause, uh, especially if you've applied for public service loan forgiveness. Your loans have been or will be transferred to Mohila. Uh, the servicer for public service loan forgiveness is no longer Fed loan. It's all Mohila. Um, most of that has happened over the last three years. Um, so you should be safe and sound within Mohila and have your opportunity to set up your account. Um, if your servicer ended their contract like Fed loan, your loans may have been transferred to another servicer that's not Mohila if you're not currently applying for public service loan forgiveness. Either way, um, you can figure out your servicer by logging onto your federal student aid dashboard. And if you can't log in, you can always call 1-800-4-FED-AID to figure out your loan servicer information. And I'm going to show you exactly where you can find your servicer on your federal student aid dashboard. So this is as soon as you log in, you'll see a summary of your loans, principal and interest. Um, on this side, you're gonna see your upcoming payments and your servicer name and the due date. So this is for me, for example, my servicer currently is Ed Financial. And at the bottom, you'll see highlighted in yellow with the red box around it, you have your loan servicers with a link and if you follow that link, you'll be able to log into your account or set up a new account if necessary. So that is critical 
to identify your servicer, number one, so you know where to be making your payments, and number two, so you can figure out first how to update your contact information. This is very important not only for the Department of Education to have your information, but also your servicer. They're going to be sending you information via email and mail, and so it's good to ensure that they have your email address, your telephone number, and your mailing address um, on file. So you're also getting your bills. You're also getting notifications about new opportunities for IDR plans, forgiveness plans, et cetera. Now, the third step, enroll in auto pay. All of the servicers offer auto pay to streamline your payment process and help you make all of your payments on time. If you enroll, you will save um, a quarter of a percent on your interest rate which could be really big over time, but it also saves you the headache of remembering if you'd made your student loan payment on time. As we know, falling behind on your student loan payments can be detrimental. You can end up um, way behind. And currently for the next year, the Department of Education is gonna be uh, a lot more lenient on late payments. You're not gonna fall into delinquency and have all of those um, loan collections issues. So if you were enrolled in auto pay before the payment pause, you may need to re-enroll. So we're recommending that everybody go back in through their servicer and certify that you are on auto pay. And where it is on the website is going to differ between servicers, but it should be front and center for you. Finally, most importantly, and this is something you do through federal student aid. That is the most important thing to remember. To enroll in an IDR plan, you have to go through federal student aid. So IDR plans, these calculate your monthly payment amount based on your income and family size. This will reduce what you owe based on your financial need and your capacity to pay. You have to be enrolled in an IDR plan to make progress towards public service loan forgiveness. It is one of the core aspects of the program. Um, your IDR plan that you're currently on will be listed on your aid summary. So if you go to the Federal Student Aid Dashboard, um, underneath the menu, there should be an option to look through your aid summary. You can also use this direct link to get there, and it will be listed next to each of your loans. Um, if you're already enrolled in an IDR plan, your servicer will let you know if it's time for a recertification. Right now, recertification has been delayed for another year. Based on the pandemic, they're trying to give everybody more flexibility. And for the future certifications, you can do it easily now by connecting your federal student aid profile to um, your tax profile so they know immediately what your income is. Um, for right now, if your income or your family size has changed, your required monthly payment amount may increase or decrease. If you're not currently enrolled in an IDR plan or you want to switch, we recommend everybody goes to sunaid.gov slash IDR to apply now. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague Sam to talk about our newest IDR plan. Thank you so much, Sophia. So uh, we did want to take a little time to talk about the new SAVE plan. This is a, a new IDR plan that was launched by the Biden administration just a few months ago over the summer, and it is the most affordable IDR plan uh, that has been released so far. Now, the SAVE plan, like other IDR plans, um, does use a monthly payment amount based on your income and family size, but uh, it is set up in a way that uh, for most borrowers, uh, will re result in lower monthly payments um, as well as shorter payment time overall. So the save plan um, decreases monthly payments uh, by increasing the amount of protected income. So that's the amount of income that would be excluded from those, those calculations um, of discretionary income. So if you are a single borrower earning $32,800 or less, or a family of four uh, earning about $67,500 or less, um, you will have no monthly payments uh, whatsoever. Um, you will have no uh, additional monthly payments whatsoever. Now, one of the, the biggest um, changes to this plan is that it eliminates any interest accrual uh, that uh, is in addition to what your monthly payment would be. So many people, when they uh, start paying their loans um, under some previous plans, would actually see their total balance go up, uh, despite the fact that they would be paying on time every month. This is due to uh, interest that would be accruing. What SAVE does is it uh, will waive any additional interest 
um, that would accrue beyond what you would uh, what your monthly payment would be. So your principal balance will never go up. And then one of the other benefits of this is that um, uh, people that file taxes um, separately uh, from spouses uh, will not have their spousal income um, included uh, as part of those calculations. Now, just as an example, we wanted to show you just a little chart right here of um, what borrowers could expect to pay. Um, these, are, these are just examples um, based on family size and uh, expected income. Now, your situation and what uh, you would pay is going to be um, linked to a bunch of different factors, but, but linked to the family size and income, as well as what your, uh, your total loan amount is. Um, this is something which uh, is available by going to the FSA website. Um, we, we have some more details, I think, on the next slide. Um, but also, in addition uh, to what has been implemented now, starting in July of 2024, the SAVE plan will also uh, cut undergraduate loan payments in half. So borrowers uh, that have both graduate and undergraduate loans um, will see the percentage of income uh, that they are paying uh, drop as well. Now, loans uh, after 10 years of payments um, will also it will take less time total to pay off. So if you have $12,000 or less in total loans uh, for undergraduate loans, you will not be paying for more than that time. So what can you do? Well, if uh, you are not on IDR, we suggest the, the biggest thing is that we want you to get on IDR. Um, and for, uh, for most of you, um, the SAVE plan will be the best option. But to see what your options are, you can go to studentaid.gov slash IDR. Um, there will be a calculator which will allow you to weigh your options. Now, if you are already on um, the repay plan or you recently applied for it, you will automatically be moved over to SAVE. You do not have to do anything that will be an automatic process. But if you are any on any of the other IDR plans, you can always go um, to studentaid.gov, kind of look at options and see kind of where your loans um, are. Now, Parent Plus, unfortunately, are not eligible for the SAVE plan, even after you consolidate. If you are in default, you are also not eligible. But um, there is a fresh start program, which will allow you to get out of default and to get back in, into uh, return to repayment and allow you to um, uh, be a part of some of these other programs. Now, I did wanna mention just really quickly before I pass this off to my colleagues, um, we have heard anecdotally uh, some people that are going through the, um, the loan simulator for uh, the SAVE plan have had some difficulties and have um, maybe gotten some values which they, they haven't expected. We have heard that for some, uh, the, the proposed amounts, uh, that there, there is an error with um, an issue that is known uh, with that calculator and we will update you um, as we know more about that. Now, with that, I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague, Ronnie, who will tell you about PSLF. Awesome, thanks so much, Sam. So Public Service Loan Forgiveness, or PSLF for short, um, this is a program that is specifically there for our public servants out there, those who are in the public sector workforce. And that includes educators like many of those folks now on uh, this webinar today and many of our NEA members. And so the promise of PSLF is really simple. Work full time for a public service employer for at least 10 years. And this includes all public school districts, both public and nonprofit higher education institutions are uh, eligible. And the important key thing is about who you work for, not about what you do or what is your job title or your responsibilities. So this means all facets of our NEA membership are eligible for PSLF, including teachers, professors, higher education faculty, education support professionals, uh, specialized instructional support personnel. All of these different education sectors are all eligible for PSLF because you guys all, majority of you guys all work for uh, a public service employer, i.e. your school district or higher ed institution. And then in addition to those 10 years, you have to make 120 on-time student loan payments. And the key thing about this is that the three and a half months that we mentioned about the payment pause uh, that we've been going through the past couple of years, those, all those months count towards the uh, PSLF, even though most folks weren't making actual payments on their student loans. And once you fulfill both of those uh, criteria items, you will get from forgiveness on your federal student loans on that remaining loan balance. 
Um, unfortunately, until about two years ago, the program had denied over 90% of applicants. And that's really when NEA uh, sprung into action and really advocated for change with the Biden administration on this. And we've seen amazing dividends. So let's talk about that success. So starting from the bottom, uh, 16,000 was the total borrowers who received PSLF prior to the limited waiver. The first set of applicants to paint a picture, so PSLF was created in 2007. And so with that said, the first set of applicants came in 2017. Um, and when that happened, that was when the first wave of over 90% of rejections happened. So from about 2017 to about 2021, only 16,000 individuals and in all the public sector jobs had received PSLF, uh, just to give them an idea. And so after that, again, like I said, NEA sprung way into action. We sent 170,000 messages uh, from NEA members, all educators, specifically to the U.S. Department of Education, demanding that there's some type of reform or debt relief for public servants out there and make right of the PSLF program. What happened was there was something called the limited waiver, which some folks maybe today might have benefited from. Um, the limited waiver helped change about how PSL was considering payments, essentially making all the stringent criteria that was making it difficult for folks to get PSLF. Um, They're trying to essentially provide credit to those to the to those wrongdoings. And with that happening, uh, over six hundred seventy thousand at this point. Uh, of estimated borrowers um, as of May this year have received student loan forgiveness because of the PSL limited waiver. And there's just about a little under 1 million applications that have still yet to be fully processed. So these numbers will continue to uh, go up and keep counting at this point. Um, but the limited waiver expired on October 31st of last year. However, that's not the end of it. And we'll get into a little bit of that uh, in a little bit in the next slide. Um, but let's finish the numbers here. So then of that 670,000, that was an estimated of 1 million borrowers also as well, uh, moved closer to getting forgiveness uh, because of the limited waiver. It wasn't just about full forgiveness. Some folks may have gotten closer to receiving forgiveness because of how the limited waiver happened. Uh, it may have count payments that didn't count previously and thus moved them closer to the 120 payment threshold of their 10 year career. And then finally, $47 billion was the amount of debt forgiven because of the limited waiver. And again, that is the so far number because we will expect much more debt forgiveness stories and much more approved applications very soon. So let's talk about something called the account adjustment. So as I mentioned, the PSL limited waiver ended on October 31st. And um, that doesn't mean that the opportunity has ended and PSLF is retaining a re uh, returning back to what it used to be with the over 90% rejections. So the binary administration is continuing to help more borrowers in the public sector get closer to forgiveness by automatically reviewing your payment history and counting more payments as qualifying. This one-time count adjustment will count more time towards PSLF, like latent partial payments, payments made under any repayment plan, payments made under parent plus loans, fell loans, or Perkins loans before consolidation, and months spent in extended forbearance, uh, whether that is 12 plus months consecutive or 36 months total cumulative. And all those key things I just outlined in those bullets are really uh, key to this whole aspect is because PSLF has a stringent criteria where you must have a direct loan, for example, to be the one that's eligible for forgiveness. If you don't have a direct loan, you have to consolidate to get to a direct loan and go through that process. And you also have to be on an income driven repayment plan to get credit for PSLF. Well, this is what the account adjustment goes into play and will credit any payment made under previous repayment plans and make sure that you're up to up to date on the number of payments. So this account adjustment is essentially doing uh, some of the same things as the limited waiver was doing, except it's going through this process automatically. And we'll walk you through what you exactly need to do to take advantage of this account adjustment. So for this timeline, so if you are a federal direct loan holder, the account adjustment will occur automatically in 2024. Uh, when you apply for public service loan forgiveness, your payment account will be automatically adjusted. And they will do that as soon as they receive your first PSLF application. For FEL, parent, uh, Perkins, or Parent Plus holders, you will need to apply for direct loan consolidation prior to December 31st of this year. And once your consolidation is complete, your payment count will be temporarily reduced to zero. That is completely normal in this process. And then once the account adjustment goes into effect and they review your account through that automation, your payment count will increase based on the adjustment. And again, we'll reflect all the criteria that I mentioned earlier.
And with that, I will turn to Sam just to go over the last bit of these PSL regulations, because there are some more things that have improved on this front. Sam. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Ronnie. So uh, some other regulations which have gone into effect um, this summer is uh, allowing borrowers to obtain credit for late partial or lump sum payments um, if the borrower certifies qualifying employment. So, uh, you know, in the past, um, there may have been some payments which you were not given credit for as far as a monthly credit. Um, now the department has allowed those payments to, uh, to count as a monthly payment. Um, as long as qualifying employment uh, has been certified. It would also allow uh, award credit for months in deferment or forbearance. Borrowers who um, consolidate loans, I think we had at least had one or two questions about that, will not lose their payment progress as part of that. Now, additional opportunities for borrowers to request reconsideration for forgiveness. If um, in the past they had been denied, um, there are other opportunities for that to happen. Uh, it also makes it easier for adjunct and contingent faculty to meet the full-time employment requirement because now there is a uh, credit hour multiplier that um, better reflects what a full-time workload is for a contingent faculty member, even if the actual hours themselves um, didn't match what uh, someone that in a different field um, would be considered full-time. And with that, I think we are ready for some questions. Um, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Sophia. Um, yep, thanks, Sam. So I see we've had a lot of great questions coming in the Q&A already um, and tons of answers flowing through the rest of the team. These are some of our most frequently asked questions, just covering some of the basics in hopes that we are saving all of you some time with going through the Q&A. So our first, is how do I know I'm on the right repayment plan for the account adjustment and PSLF? So all of the existing income driven repayment plans, IDR plans are eligible for PSLF. So that includes save, which was formerly repay, pay, IBR and ICR. So if you're already enrolled, you obviously have to recertify your income annually to remain. As I mentioned before, that recertification deadline has been pushed um, due to COVID and all of the payment pauses. So that should be happening in the next year. And in the future, um, recertification can happen automatically if you connect your federal student aid account with your tax information. So to apply for an IDR plan, which we discussed earlier with the SAVE program, um, that's always through federal student aid. That's never through your servicer or an outside company. It's at studentaid.gov slash IDR. Um, and the star on ICR, if you have a Parent PLUS loan, you are only eligible for ICR. That is the only IDR plan that Parent PLUS loan types can work with. Um, if you are interested in pursuing PSLF and, or utilizing any of the other IDR plans, the recommendation generally <clears throat> is to consolidate your Parent PLUS loan. But that's a very individual circumstance and we always recommend that you go through the navigator. Okay. Our next question, um, I'm gonna pass that one over to Sam. How do I know that I'm enrolled in the SAVE plan? Sure. So for the SAVE plan, um, if you are on repay or were on repay, uh, you will automatically be moved over to SAVE as we said. Now, most borrowers who have applied separately for the SAVE plan will see their monthly payment reflected on their uh, starting in October. Now, your servicer may not update that automatic, like, immediately. It might take a little bit to see that on your servicers page. However, you can always go to studentaid.gov, log in um, using those credentials, and you should be able to see um, the most up-to-date information on the status of your application uh, on that page. Great, thank you. Our next question, I'm going to pass it to Ronnie, if you're available. Yep, Why you. is my estimated payment higher under the SAVE plan than my previous IDR plan? So this is an extremely unlikely scenario. Uh, this has only happened in some rare instances, but it may be explained by an increase in your income or reduction in your family size since you last certified your IDR plan. In any event that the estimate, estimated payment that you see when you apply for an IDR plan is not final, your accurate payment count will be uh, on your first statement for your October payments. 
Uh, we also have been hearing anecdotally from some of our members who are trying to apply for SAVE right now that the estimator is estimating that their SAVE plan uh, payments is actually going to be larger than all the other plans um, or larger than their previous payments. And that actually might be a little bit of an error. Um, the Department of Education is well aware of this at this moment. Um, and we are trying to work with them very closely to address this to make sure that the estimator provides an accurate reflection about what your payment will be. Um, again, this is a super rare scenario. Um, if you're uncomfortable with in terms of applying for SAVE and have one of those unique situations, feel free to go on any other IDR plan, especially if you're looking to seek for public service loan forgiveness, um, because you must be on an IDR plan to make progress in the PSLF. So we highly encourage you to be on some sort of IDR plan. Um, and then, of course, you can always recertify your income and move to a different IDR plan, such as SAVE down the road. Great, thank you. I'm going to take the next one. Um, if I have private loans or refinance my loans, am I eligible for forgiveness or the IDR plans we've been discussing? Um, unfortunately, no. Uh, the federal government can only forgive debts that it holds, and federal student aid can only govern the administration of the debt that the government owns. So federal student aid can set the policy for repayment terms for federal student loans, but not private loans. So these student loans are not eligible for PSLF or all of the other federal debt relief programs. Those are student loans that come from state government programs, loans from a bank or a commercial lender, and loans that were refinanced or consolidated uh, with a bank or a private company like SoFi, a credit union, or a state student loan authority. Um, we've heard of many borrowers in the past who thought that they were consolidating their loans, uh, but ended up refinancing into a private loan. And unfortunately, there's no reversing that. So you have to be very careful about the communications that you receive about your student debt and your student loans. Ensure that you are following links from your servicer only, from federal student aid only, and be very wary of offers to consolidate that aren't coming from those two sources. Okay, I'm going to save this one for Sam. Should I apply for PSLF even if I haven't yet made 120 payments? Good question. And the answer to that is yes. Now, in order to do that, you'll need to uh, submit an application for all of your qualifying employers um, going back 10 years at least. So you can do one application now to save you time, and we recommend doing one annually. Now, there are two ways to do this. Um, you can always go to the studentaid.gov slash PSLF using the PSLF help tool. But if you are an NEA member or uh, want to be an NEA member, member, you can use NEA's Student Debt Navigator, which uh, our partners at Savvy will be going over shortly. You can find that at neamb.com slash Savvy. Now to submit that application, if you're using our nav navigator, it is taken care of for you. Your form will automatically be submitted to Mohila, which is the servicer for PSLF. If you are using a digital employer signature on the uh, help tool, your form will be sent uh, to Mohila. Now, if you're not able to get that digitally or you have a like on paper ink signature, you uh, if Mohila is already your servicer, you can just upload it to Mohila's website at the link below. Mohila is not your servicer, you must mail or fax that to them according uh, to directions as part of that process. Now, Department of Ed recommends using certified mail just to make sure you are covered. Um, but if you are able and you are interested uh, as a member or becoming a member, um, Savvy will take care of all that for you. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, I did see this one come up in the Q&A. Uh, do the years of public service have to be consecutive to count for PSLF? Uh, the answer is no. As long as you are working full time for a qualifying employer while you're making payments for a total of 120 months, you can be eligible. So you can bounce back and forth between private employment and public service work and still be gaining your progress towards PSLF. You don't lose it if you leave, um, but you also aren't making it when you're not in public service. Uh, so that's incredibly important. We've seen a lot of members who have left public service and then come back in and still gotten their PSLF. Okay, Ronnie, I'm going to save this one for you. Do Parent PLUS loans qualify for PSLF? They do, but of course the route towards Parent PLUS is a little difficult. So the caveat, and I'll walk you guys through this very slowly. So yes, Parent PLUS loans do qualify for PSLF. 
Um, but it has to be the borrower, aka the parent. They have to consolidate for them to qualify. So this is not the student that is benefiting from these Parent PLUS loans. So a parent borrower with only Parent PLUS loans, they have to consolidate them into a qualifying direct loan through the loan consolidation process. And previous payments on Parent PLUS loans will count towards P for PSLF as long as you apply for consolidation by the end of this year, by January 2024, to take advantage of the account adjustment, just like I mentioned earlier. A borrower or a parent with their own direct loans and also Parent PLUS loans taken out for their child on their behalf can also consolidate these two loans together. And same as the other way, um, previous payments on the direct loans and the Parent PLUS loan will count towards PSLF because of the account adjustment, as long as you apply for consolidation by January 2024. Okay, this is a big one, um, and we are going to call up Sam to answer. As an adjunct or contingent faculty member, I do not teach in my institution full time. How does PSLF apply to me? That's a great question. Um, I covered this a little briefly earlier on, but under the new regulations for PSLF as of July 1st, um, those uh, contingent or adjunct faculty, um, uh, your PSLF eligibility is now calculated by multiplying each credit hour or contact hour by 3.35. In the past, um, many uh, faculty that had a full course load, um, but just based on credit hour, uh, who worked for some institutions were not considered full time and that created a significant problem. So the department um, changed those regulations and now a faculty member teaching nine credit hours per semester um, at any number of schools would be enough for those faculty uh, to meet the full-time requirement for PSL PSLF eligibility. Great, thank you so much. We are going to pass it over to our friends at Savvy. So Savvy runs the Student Debt Navigator which is free for NEA members. And Savvy also is a standalone program. So if you are not an NEA member, you're not eligible to be an NEA member, you can still use Savvy. Great, thank you so much, Sophia. And apologies, we just lost a light bulb in my home. So if it looks like I'm coming in from the dark, uh, apologies for the, the lack of light, uh, but hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, again, my name is Lindsay Clark. I'm the chief borrower advocate here at Savvy. And I've had the pleasure of working with the NEA and NEA member benefits team uh, for almost the last four or five years together. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about our student debt navigator uh, in hopes that this can be a powerful tool to help all of you navigate through what I'm sure uh, you have all felt, which is that these programs are great, but can be complicated and overwhelming. Uh, before I do, um, on the next slide, I just want to talk a bit about who we are here at Savvy, since you might be a little bit less familiar with us. We are a social impact technology startup based in Washington, DC. We were founded by student loan experts and advocates who had been fighting on behalf of the borrower for almost a decade. And in 2017, this was the first year that borrowers could actually start applying for public service loan forgiveness. 99% uh, were rejected. Uh, and our co-founders saw this and decided to do something about it. So they developed Savvy as a technology platform and a service to help borrowers like you and like myself, I'm a student loan borrower, uh, not only better understand our student loans, but actually navigate successfully from start to finish around some of these complicated programs. Uh, but along the way, our goal is to really make the experience of being a student loan borrower a better one. Uh, because I think we can all agree that it's not a great one. Uh, and we try to do that by unlocking as much additional savings as possible through things like income-driven repayment plans, which the NEA expert team has talked about. Uh, we're a registered public benefit corporation, which means it exists in our mission and charter to serve the public benefit. Uh, and that's exactly why we do things like this here tonight and partner with such wonderful uh, organizations like NEA and NEA member benefits. Uh, so what does that actually mean? Well, on this next slide, I'll sort of walk you through exactly what Savvy can do for you all. Essentially, it's going to be an easier way to manage your student loans. We try to simplify and digitize the enrollment process from start to finish. Uh, and I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like in a couple screens. Uh, you're able to access one-on-one -on -one support with student loan experts and advocates every step of the way. Uh, and I know uh, how important that can be as a borrower uh, to be able to pick up the phone uh, and contact a trusted resource uh, and get that reliable information uh, when you're unsure of what to do next. 
you know, on average, our users are able to reduce their monthly payment uh, by about $150 a month and receive on average about $20,000 in forgiveness. Uh, and so far, we've been able to help find over a billion in projected forgiveness to date. So without further ado, I'm excited to be able to show all of you how to access uh, the Student Debt Navigator powered by Savvy. Um, you need to sign into your NEA member benefits account. Uh, you can either scan that QR code that you see on your screen, uh, or you can go to the link there, neamb.com forward slash student debt. And I think my colleagues are going to put some of those links in the chat for easy access as well. Now, once you've signed into your account, uh, the first thing that you're going to see is this sort of welcome screen. And we're going to ask you two pretty basic questions. That is, you know, your expected income for the current year and your current student loan payment. Now, obviously, we realize payments have been paused, so you're going to want to put what you were paying before the pause began. Just a rough estimate is fine. Uh, and from answering those two questions, we'll sort of bring you into the tool. Uh, and on this next slide, you'll be able to get started with the process. Um, and it kind of feels almost like a turbo tax for your student loans, uh, or at least that's the best analogy I can use to describe it. We're going to ask you some basic questions around you know, your family size, your tax filing status, right? All of these things factor into those income-driven repayment plans. Uh, on the next page, once you've completed the family information, we'll ask you about your income. Again, this is going to be a key factor in determining uh, what that monthly payment's going to be on an income-driven repayment plan. Uh, after the income section, we're going to ask you about your employment. And this one is really important in determining your eligibility for forgiveness programs like public service loan forgiveness uh, and or teacher loan forgiveness. We have a database built into this tool of all of the PSLF and teacher loan forgiveness eligible employers in the country. So when you start typing in your employer uh, into that box, it should pop up from that drop down menu. You'll be able to select it. And then we'll ask you some further clarifying questions to really refine that estimate. Now, I highly encourage all of you to add not only your current employer, but any previous employment you might've had. You know, these programs are retroactive, right? So as many employers as you might've had, especially with public service loan forgiveness, right? Going back to 2007, again, this is gonna help us understand the full picture of your forgiveness eligibility. And then after you've completed that employment section, the last step is syncing your student loans. So we provide a loan sync through a, a technology called Plaid. It's a best-in-class syncing technology. And what it allows you to do is to select your servicer. So let's say Navient in this case, enter in your Navient username and password credentials, and it's going to sync over a read-only snapshot of that data. So it's not giving us access or anything like that. It's simply allowing us to see things like your disbursement date, your loan type, your balance, your interest rate, all of these are things that we're gonna to need to, again, refine those estimates around what you're eligible for. And once you've synced your loans, that's pretty much it. On this next slide, you'll see uh, what that sort of end result page looks like, what we call our plan options page. And this is what you'll see your best repayment and forgiveness options could be. Uh, and as you can see here, the new save plan is fully integrated into the tool. So you'll be able to see what that estimate looks like. Uh, that new monthly payment amount, that total payment over time, how long until you're eligible to receive forgiveness down to the year and month, and how much in total forgiveness you're eligible to receive. You might be eligible for a couple of different uh, income-driven repayment plans, and we're gonna show you those. You can expand below for more details. So really anything that you're gonna be eligible for based on the information you provided, we're gonna be able to capture there for you. But that's, uh, you know, I, I would say the best part doesn't just end there. Uh, you know, it's great to see what options are available to you, but really taking that step, uh, that next step is submitting the applications and enrolling in these programs. And we know that can be a heavy administrative burden. Uh, so if you click continue, uh, as part uh, of the essential membership that is offered to all NEA members, uh, we take on all of that administrative burden for you. Uh, so with the click of a button, you are able to have those forms and applications, both for your income-driven repayment plan, as well as public service loan forgiveness or teacher loan forgiveness, uh, pre-filled, digitized. We actually send them to your employer on your behalf uh, so that you are able uh, to not have to worry about that. 
uh, and then we submit them to your servicer uh, quickly, efficiently, uh, and free of error. Uh, and then, as I'm going to show you on this next slide, we actually track and monitor the progress of those applications for you uh, so that we can ensure uh, that you will always reach the desired outcome. One of the most frustrating things I know as a borrower is that lack of visibility and transparency. And with your savvy dashboard, you're always able to log back in and see what's been submitted, what we might still need from you, where you are in your progress towards forgiveness. All of that is captured in one place. So on this next slide, I'm just gonna out lay out sort of the different options of how to use your savvy account. Uh, you know, anyone can access that savvy account for free, but as an NEA member benefits member, uh, you are able to take advantage of sort of our premium level of services, what we call that essential plan uh, at no cost. Uh, and this is basically all of the application um, submission, all of the one-on-one -on -one support that you could hope for, that is all included in that essential plan. And speaking of support, uh, on this next slide, our customer support uh, is bar none. Uh, we have an internal team of student loan experts like myself who work with borrowers day in and day out. You are able to access them through your savvy account. You can send them a message. We have an interactive help center with lots of great content that you can access at any time, or you can give us a call weekdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And I'll make sure to put that number in the chat as well. So to wrap things up here and sort of uh, summarize the next steps, you know, again, you can scan that QR code uh, or go to the link that you see on your screen. You want to make sure you log into your NEAMB uh, account uh, to be able to access that savvy student debt navigator. Uh, you're going to want to create that savvy account. Make sure you enroll in that savvy essential plan that, again, you are getting free of charge thanks to NEA member benefits. Uh, and complete those applications with ease, um, knowing that you're doing it correctly and that we've got your back. Uh, and if you should need assistance at any point along the way, again, you can always reach out to our team through your savvy account, or you can call the number that you see on your screen here, which is 833-382-3175. So with that being said, I will turn it back over to the NEA team because I think we're gonna take some questions. Great. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Yes, we are going to go through our Q&A and just highlight some questions that we would like to answer live to address on the record so that everybody's able to hear it. Our first question is going to be for Ronnie. Uh, we had a question asking about the benefit of separating your joint spousal consolidation loans. Um, if I can locate that borrower's name, uh, Vanessa Frost had asked, is there a benefit to split your spousal consolidation loans? That is a great question. So uh, for joint spousal consolidation loans, unfortunately, there's no mechanism at this point to separate those loans. Um, Congress and President Biden uh, just last year recently signed into law uh, a way and a mechanism to separate those loans. But at this moment, uh, there is no mechanism in place to implement that policy yet, um, primarily because I think the Department of Education is incredibly swamped at this point with dealing with loan repayment and the different things they're doing in forgiveness right now. Um, so we hopefully will expect something soon in terms of how we can separate those loans. Um, that doesn't mean that you don't qualify for public service loan forgiveness. Uh, if you do uh, have a joint spousal consolidation loan, there is an opportunity where your portion of the loan before technically it was merged together could get forgiveness uh, for PSLF. Um, and we would be more than happy to walk through more of that process uh, if you want to follow up on that. Um, it's a bit complicated, so I won't get too far into the weeds into it. Um, but the short answer to your question is that there isn't a mechanism for that yet, um, but the Department of Education is working on a process so that you can separate your joint spousal consolidation loans. Great, thank you. Uh, we did just have a question coming in from an anonymous attendee. They said, I keep hearing you talk about consolidating for Parent Plus, but I only have one loan. So consolidating is just kind of the turn of phrase that they use to talk about the process for changing the loan type. So even if you just have a single Parent Plus loan, in order to make it into a direct loan that's eligible for all of the other IDR plans and PSLF, you have to consolidate that into a direct loan. So if you just have one, it's the same process. Uh, it's just called consolidation. Let me go through our pending questions to see if we have something to help our borrowers. Okay, so Carolyn is just clarifying. So I don't need to do the automatic adjustment. It will be done automatically in 2024. 
That's absolutely correct. Um, and if you are pursuing PSLF and you want to know about your progress that is coming from that automatic adjustment, you should be submitting new PSLF forms to keep that up to date and ensure that you are tracking your payment progress. Um, if anybody on our team has a question that they wanted to highlight and answer on the line, you're welcome to drop it in the chat or just bring it up. Hey, Sophia, can we have a question about folks and their membership status? I see a lot about how we can check that. Uh, I would love to turn that over to Scott or Jason for that. Absolutely. Scott or Jason, can you join us on the line to talk about checking your NEA membership and ensure that you are active and able to access Savvy? Sure, absolutely. So, um, I've been providing a link and we can provide another one in the, in the Q and a, uh, for the, the navigator, which is www.nemb.com slash get nav is the quickest and easiest one or the student debt that's on here on the, on the product page, both will work. Um, once you click on the button to go to the navigator, um, your membership will be verified. So if you're in the system, we will automatically be allowed to go over to savvy. If you're not a member, you'll get an alert and a phone number for you to call to sort of verify your status, and we'll go through it that way for you. So we get feeds both from the NEA nationally and also from many of the states that allows us to sort of really have a, a very good understanding of who's a member and who isn't. Um, some members have uh, asked a question about it being eligible for um, family members. Uh, we generally try to make it available to members. Uh, it's really sort of what it comes down to. And I guess, as I've mentioned several times in the chat, that it is available. The first year of Savvy is available for free to members, compliments of the NEA Members Insurance Trust. So they've realized that this is a stressful thing. Uh, this whole student debt issue is stressful for our members and we wanted to help. Um, so we go through the process of verifying, but we really would like it to be exclusively for our members and for our member benefit. You can certainly have your spouse or child use the tool as well. Um, but uh, again, that's sort of our, our sort of answer on, on that front. So it really is meant to be exclusively for members uh, when it comes, especially getting that first year free. There's a lot of you and, and it can get rather expensive. So um, just in, in, in full, full disclosure there. So um, Ronnie, I did I answer the two questions, do you think from a membership perspective? Yes, that was great, Scott. Um, I was wondering if you could also um, clarify about spouses or also um, dependents who may want to use the Savvy tool, because you had mentioned that the Savvy tool is obviously free for NEA members, um, but what about members of the family? Yeah, so they can certainly use the tool, um, but they would be eligible for it at the Savvy standard standard rates uh, is really how we've, we've positioned it. So um, again, the, the benefits that we've negotiated really are exclusive for our, our, our members um, and, and what that looks like. And um, so, uh, and again, the, the discounts we've negotiated are, are rather significant. Again, first year free. Um, second year um, is... $49 uh, or will be soon be $49. And then uh, after that, it will be $59. Uh, we've seen companies that charge literally thousands of dollars for the kinds of service that Savvy offers. Um, so we're very pleased about the, not only the um, the value that members get out of the service, but also um, the, uh, the just the, the overall service itself is just just amazing. And we've, we have stories of members, Savvy helping members receive hundreds of thousands of dollars in forgiveness. So again, it really is a tool that the free is really designed exclusively for members and the negotiator price is exclusive for members. Um, but you know, you, you can, um, again, log into the tool. Um, I'm going to be very, and, and, and I guess in disclosure, if you started the tools yourself and then logged on as one of your kids, I'm sure you could work your way through the system if you really wanted to, that's a special tip for anyone who joined the webinar this evening. Um, but at the end of the day, it really is designed exclusively for, for members um, to, to go through the process. So we'll like to make sure that that certainly does it that way, because again, we are paying out of pocket for that, that service um, on behalf of any members and the any members insurance trust, it's not coming out of dues or anything else from the NEA. Scott, actually, if I can just have one thing too, um, to make it easy to invite those family members again, you know, they will access, you know, it through the regular savvy tool and, and not receive the promotional, you know, discount um, that any members do. Uh, if from your savvy dashboard on the left hand side, you'll see invite friends or family, you can simply enter their email address in there, they will receive a link to create their own savvy account uh, through our normal system, uh, if that makes it easier. Great, thank you so much. Uh, we brought up Savvy and the Navigator a lot this evening, so it's great to get that all in the open, understand that everybody has access to it, uh, either through Savvy or at the benefit rate for members. Yep. Uh, we, Scott, do you have anything else to add? 
No, I, I would just encourage, I, I mean, we've been answering that question a lot tonight to folks with, with very specific questions that honestly, we can't always understand. But once you go through the sync that Lindsay shared, um, go through the process, Savvy will really help you understand your situation. And honestly, they've helped some members through some really complicated situations. Uh, that team is amazing. And uh, we're really, again, excited about all they've done for our members. To, so everyone knows we've actually had about 30,000 members have actually used the Navigator since we launched it three years ago. So um, we're, again, excited about the partnership and all that we've done for, for, for with, with Savvy since, since the program launched on behalf of our members. Great. Thank you. You uh, we only have a few more minutes. I have a pretty general PSLF question, but it comes up often for our educators who have gone back to get master's or other graduate degrees. Um, do they add the undergraduate and graduate loans together when considering your progress towards PSLF? This borrower, Brandy, has been paying longer than 10 years, but now they only owe on their graduate payments, and it hasn't been 10 years. Uh, so again, this is one of those specific questions that as best for savvy to handle. But generally, if you are still in repayment on both of those loans, if you are still paying your undergraduate and you add in your graduate to the mix, your PSLF payments are gonna be calculated based on what you've been doing for your entire loan history. So it'll reach back into your undergraduate. But once you've paid off those undergraduate loans, the time you spent paying on those isn't gonna to attach to your graduate loans. But again, this is something that you can add to your savvy account and they'll sync and they'll let you know the situation. Um, but for the most part, if you have both and they're both in repayment actively, all the time you've paid on undergraduate will apply to your graduate loans. We are just at eight o'clock. So I'm going to invite the rest of our panelists to give some closing statements um, and a reminder to everybody that we're gonna pull some of the top Q and A's and all of our unanswered questions and share them with our registrants along with a recording of this, uh, which will include the PowerPoint, which has all of the links that we've been pointing everybody towards as well. Thanks so much, Sophia. Well, I will kick things off in terms of closing. Thanks so much again for everyone for joining us this evening. Again, we're here to help our members. So please feel free to visit our website at nea.org or also the NEAMB.com website to access the Savvy tool. Uh, we want to make sure that every one of our members out there is uh, respected and reflected in their loan forgiveness options and lowering their monthly payments because there's just so many possibilities out there and opportunities for you guys to take benefit of this as our public service workers out there. So thank you so much for all that you're, you do for our, uh, for our schools, for our students, for our communities. We really appreciate this. Um, this is the least that we can do for our union members. So thank you so much. I'll turn it over to Sam. Yeah, I just wanted to um, kind of reiterate when we're hearing the stories from some of our members about going through the PSLF program, um, about getting credit for months that they uh, and years that they did not think they would get, and then hearing from some the tens or in some cases hundreds of thousands of dollars that have been forgiven, literally changing their lives overnight um, because they have. Uh, followed up with some of these programs. And even um, if uh, they were not going through the PSLF program, even if they're using IDR, just seeing um, their monthly payments drop as a result of um, the new SAVE plan, as a result of some of those changes, uh, um, as a result of some of the, uh, the work of NEA, NEA staff, and many of our members throughout the country um, to raise up this issue for our educators. And I'll pass it over to... Uh, Jeff? Or anyone else with any? Uh... Yeah, no, I just, thank you, Sam. I appreciate it. Um, I'm on a lot of these webinars, but I was happy to be in the background. I think I'm sweating from furiously pounding out answers. I hope that they're helpful. Um, I would note we have a question that Fernando asked a little while ago. We'll try to answer that one. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, you broke up there, but I think what you shared was that you're going to get back to Fernando on his retiree question. Is that true? Great. Scott, Jason, any final thoughts? Or no. Um, again, thank you all for the time. Thank you for joining us. Um, I, we really appreciate this. I really, you know, encourage you to take advantage of the navigator. We're really excited about the benefit that offers and and um, helping members sort of deal with this again unnecessarily complicated program. Um, but you know, you, um, and again, we just really hope that you can take take advantage of of the program. It's a it's a it's a good one, and we're we're really proud of it.
great. If my colleagues don't have any further thoughts, thank you so much again for joining us this evening. And yeah, get after it. We'll uh, hopefully see you guys on the other side, whether it's forgiveness or lowering your student loan payments. Make sure you guys do all this stuff for the deadlines. Um, but we'll have other content like this in the coming days and weeks. So stay tuned for more information or latest updates from us. Take care, everybody. Have a good night.